If you're struggling to get information in Airtable from one table into another, then this video is for you. We're gonna be doing a deep dive on two specific field types. One is the lookup, and two is its close brother or cousin, uh, the rollup field. Both of these field types are going to bring data from one table and uh, you know, essentially pull it into another table of your choosing. So if that's something you're struggling with, and if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to unlock the true power of Airtable and Zapier. In this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing a deep dive on two of the more complicated field types, the lookup and the rollup field. But before we get into it, definitely click subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up if you are all about that Airtable content. Uh, we put out weekly videos and you probably don't want to miss those if you're looking to level up your Airtable game. But without further ado, let's just jump on into my screen here and we'll start taking a look at this really simple example that we've set up. So as you see, we've got contacts and we have invoices. And so our contacts are pretty straightforward. We're just collecting, obviously, contact level data. So first name, last name, which then rolls into a full name using a little formula. Uh, we're pulling in or we have access to a phone number and we have an email address. And then, of course, we have a linked relationship. And this is where we get our tables talking. So we've got our contacts and it's going to talk to or link to our invoices table. So let's jump over to our invoices real quick and take a look at this. You see we've got an invoice number that is the identifying uh, field or the primary field. Uh, then we have our invoice date, so the date it was created, contact, that is who the invoice went to, and an amount. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? Of course, contact is where we're linking that information. So real quick, let's talk about some reasons that you might need to do some lookup or rollup data uh, analysis, or rather to have access to those things in various tables. So one huge, huge example, and probably the biggest reason that you'll ever need to do lookups or rollups is because when you're building Airtable automation, if you're synced up with Zapier, uh, when you're going and building these things, Zapier is going to look at one table at a time and pull that data in. Now you can, of course, create multiple steps in Zapier where it looks at more than one table, uh, but it's, you know, it's a little clunky to do that and you can save yourself a lot of hassle in your Zapier creation if you instead build your Airtable base in a way that all the information you need is located in one place. So let's think of a really simple example. Let's say you were creating your invoices automatically by um, pushing that information from Airtable into Zapier. So maybe you build some sort of a Zap that says when there is a new invoice in the invoice table, then I want this you know, automation to uh, run. And maybe there are a lot of pieces of information that need to go into that invoice that are related to the contact. For example, you might want to include the contact email in that automation. Well, since we don't have the contact email in this field here, then you know, we would have to build an extra step in that automation to look, look up the contact, grab that email address, and then use it in our automated process. But that's, like I said, a little clunky. So let's skip it and let's bring that email address into the invoice table. For this, we can use a lookup field. So we're going to look up the email. And what this means is we're going to look at so first we're going to pick the lookup field type. And what this is going to do is you see it asks us two questions. It says, what's the field uh, in this table, that is the invoices table, that links to records you want to look up? That's step one. And so, of course, we only have one link, and that's our link to the contacts table. But if we had six, seven, eight tables, we would have a bunch of different options when we look at all of the different uh, you know, drop down here. Of course, as it is, we only have that one. Okay, so then it asks, second question, now that we're looking at the contacts table, what is the field that you want to bring back? So in this case, you know, we even gave it the name, lookup email. So we're looking at the contact that's linked to this, uh, you know, to each of these invoices, and we're bringing in the contacts email. So we're going to look for that email address. So once I click save, 
it's automatically going to pull in the email address that's associated with that contact. Let's prove that to ourselves really quickly by doing a Mickey at example here. So Mickey's our second, um, our, our second uh, person in our contact list. And so if we jump into our invoices, let's say we create a new invoice, 1004, and maybe that's for 615 and uh, in the amount of 2000, and we connect it to Mickey. Once we build that linked relationship, you see Airtable took just a moment to think, and it brings in the email address that's associated to Mickey on the other table. If we made a mistake and we didn't mean to bring Mickey in, and we, you know, we clear that out, you see that the email address also is cleared out. We could then change it to Gareth, and then we bring in Gareth's email address. So pretty cool stuff, right? This is all happening uh, automatically in the background, and so we don't need to then do a bunch of copy and paste from one table to another. So that's what the lookup field does. It's gonna look up every single one of those. Let's take an example, though, in the other direction. Let's say we wanted to see the amounts that we've invoiced people uh, on a contact table. So let's look at invoiced amounts. We're gonna, we're gonna say lookup invoiced amounts. Again, we're going to build a lookup relationship. And, you know, it's again, it's going to ask us what table do you want to look at? Of course, we only have one linked relationship in this table, just as we do in the other. So invoices is the only option here. And then we want to bring in that amount. So let's bring in that amount and we'll go to formatting and we want to make sure it presents in dollars. And we're going to click save. Okay, so now this is getting a little cluttered. Right? What this is doing is it's bringing back every single instance that something is linked. And since we have three different links to different invoices in this example, and then one here, you, we of course come back with multiple options. So here we're getting a, you know, one response for each of the amounts on these invoices. So this doesn't tell us a whole lot when we do a lookup. And so that's when we might instead turn to the rollup field. Now the rollup is a more advanced lookup. And so we're gonna look, we're gonna roll up the invoiced amount. And I'm gonna select that rollup field type. There we go. All right, now before we go any further, real quick explanation of what the rollup field type is. The rollup field is a lookup, so it does exactly the same thing a lookup does with the added benefit of throwing on um, an, what they call an aggregate function at the end of it. So the aggregate function could be um, a sum, it could be a max, or it could be a min. Those are the most commonly used ones. There are a number of different things we can uh, use here in the rollup field. But effectively what that means is it's gonna look up, just as the lookup field did, it's gonna look up a certain value, and then it's gonna perform some sort of logic or uh, formula on that uh, relationship or on those on those uh, fields. So let's take a look. We've got our invoices again and we're gonna look at the amount again and this time perhaps instead we'll do a sum. And what this means is it's gonna look at all of the all of the different invoice amounts and it will add them all up. Again we're gonna go to formatting and change to the currency and we'll click Save. And now what you see is it's automatically adding up all of those amounts that were looked up in the previous one, and it's doing a sum on them. So a really cool use case here, we can very quickly and easily see the total amounts that we've invoiced our different clients by using the rollup field. All right, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of the difference between lookup and rollup, and also why you might need to do these uh, in various situations. Again, the biggest, strongest use case is going to be in building automation, but there's a ton of other reasons that you might use them as well. One last thing before you go, we're going to do an advanced use case for a lookup. So let's suppose what you wanted to do was look up only um, the invoice number in the case where it is the max invoice date. So let's Let's talk about what this might, or why we might want to do this. Let's say what you want to know on the contacts table is what is the last invoice that we sent to each client. So in this case, you know, we see that Gareth has been invoiced three times. The invoice, the last one we sent was 1003. 
In the case of Mickey, it's 1004. So the question is, you know, how would we get that set up in here? So let's look for, uh, we'll, we'll call this recent invoice. And if we were to do a lookup, of course, we know it's going to bring back every instance. So we'll probably want to start by trying to do this with a rollup. And we'd look at invoices and we would look at that invoice number and we could, for example, do a max values here. And that's perfect. So that is returning exactly what we want because it says, hey, I know that, uh, you know, we've got 1001, 1002, 1003, and I'm going to bring back 1003. But what happens just in case, maybe you've got you know, two invoicing systems or something where the max number isn't necessarily the one you want to bring back. What if you want to bring back the number, the invoice number for the max date? So we can bring in the max date, obviously using a similar, uh, similar logic there, where we, look, we do a roll-up field, we look at the invoices, and we're going to bring back the uh, date and we will use the max aggregation function and it's going to bring back the max date. So in this case, the last time we invoiced Gareth was on June 12th and the last time we invoiced Mickey was June 15th. Let's look over here and verify that's correct. So here we go. These three, June 12th is the max, yes. And in this case, Mickey on the 15th. That's perfect. Now, why or, or, or how can we then take this one step further? Now we're going to do uh, a lookup here. So we're going to look up the max date. So we're, we've first we've performed a roll up onto from the invoices we rolled up onto the contacts, and now from the invoices we're looking up from the contacts. So let's go ahead and, and set that up. So we're looking up that max date, and here it's bringing back in our max date. So six twelve or 615. Okay, that's exactly what we expect. And now we're going to write an invoice uh, number and we'll call this max date. And now what we're going to do is write a formula. All right, so we're going to say if the invoice date is equivalent to the lookup max date. If it is, then we want to return the invoice number. Otherwise, we want to return nothing, so we will just close our formula there. Let's take a look at this and see how this works. All right, so each one of these fields, or rather, each one of these uh, cells, so the, the formula that we write is applying to the entire field, and that's a big, big key takeaway when writing formulas in Airtable. So our formula is looking at this date here, invoice date, and saying, it is it equivalent to our lookup max date? And in this case, it's not, so we don't do anything. In this case, it does the same thing. 513 compares it to 612, not identical, so it does nothing. It gets down here, and it sees that the 612 is equivalent to 612, and so we return the invoice number. So now we can go back into contacts, and rather than, let's go ahead and, and hide this field here. So we'll put this, this is going to be recent invoice correct. And I'll show you why the other one uh, isn't correct in just a moment. And we're going to use a lookup. And now we're going to look up that invoice max date. Is that the right one? Let's see. I think that's it. Yeah, perfect looking it up and it's bringing back 1003, 1004. Okay, so real quick, I realize we just kind of went fast through that, but the problem we're trying to over the the problem that we're trying to overcome, the problem that we're trying to solve is what happens if we post an invoice that has a smaller number but a bigger date. So let's go ahead and make that example here. All right. So let's go ahead and create a new invoice here. And we will imagine that we have a smaller number on the invoice. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, 999. Uh, and we'll do an invoice date for 620. And we will tie this to Gareth and in the amount of whatever, $3,000. All right. So let's, let's take a look at the different um, ways that these two different fields rolled into this. So we have the roll-up field 
that is doing a recent invoice. And if you recall, this is saying what is the biggest invoice number? Now, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, the biggest invoice number is, in fact, your most recent invoice, but not 100% of the time. Sometimes there's a fluke, there's some issue with the accounting software, and so that's where this breaks. And so for that reason, we had to build that extra workaround that's doing a, a roll up and then a lookup and then passing a lookup and then a formula. Okay, and I know it was a lot, but that's how we have a difference here. This correct way of doing it knows that our most recently dated invoice is actually a smaller number than the roll up alone. And so that is the reason that we took all those extra steps to build that uh, more complicated procedure. But it's using the same core building blocks, the roll up and the lookup, with the added benefit of throwing a nice little formula in there. So anyhow, hope that all made sense. Definitely let me know any questions you might have in the comments below. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.